men, we have to understand that we're called to be leaders and that, that we take rule and submission from our relationship with God. And that's how we activate right. that, where, where we can get to that point of like, okay, I can be disciplined enough to say, man, I'm not going to masturbate anymore. I'm not going to be out here sleeping mm -hmm. around and chasing women. And it is a difficult task, especially after you've experienced it. Man, man, being single is no joke, bro. It's, 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 it's not easy out here. It's, not easy. it's you being a single man. Um, what, 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 what are your perspective on that? Like, what, what is it? What, what is it like being a single man? It's hard out here for a pen. <laughs> um, man, <clears throat> I want to put it in context. Like, being single and striving to do the right thing, you know, from okay. whatever your moral code is, you know, both the, you, and, you and I are both believers. Um, man, it's a challenge, man. Like, especially like, I, so I grew up like knowing the right thing to do. You know, I had my father in my life, but I still made some like some goofy choices and decisions, man. Mm -hmm. Bumped my head, you know, as we talked about in the man cave, I lost my virginity young, you know, yeah. and that changed me and I had nobody to talk to about that. And I think as a man, that's kind of like the struggle It's like when you're trying to do the right thing, like just collectively as men, like we don't. How often do we open up and like talk about like, yeah, man, you shouldn't be trying to sleep around. You should focus on yourself, learn how to love yourself, discover your purpose and, you know, like what that is. And um, just I don't think, men we have the we, we have a safe space to like talk about internal issues that we go through and get taken seriously. You yeah, know, I agree. Like just just for for one example, man, like so a serious thing like. That would not be laughable is like a, a woman that's going through menopause or something like that's a that's a real thing right yeah because that's that's very emotional and like daunting and changing for her um but for a man like one thing like just just for me like something that runs in my family is like in the corners like we start to lose our hair you know like that's a detrimental thing for for a man you know like i know for me when i started to like like my hair started to thin it was like it was joked you know it was mm -hmm. joked about like everybody joked about but you got a thing like this is a part of like our identity you mm -hmm. know and like so for me like I realized that just like there's certain um, just double standards, you know, like like it's laughed at, like boy, just man, cut it off, you know. Even with my brother, my brother, every, all the all the men in my family are bald now, and even with my brother, I used to find myself joking with him. I said, man, I'm gonna stop joking with him about that. Like that that's a, that's something that as men, like you know, it's our that means like there. Well, our, it, it it shows that we have a lot of testosterone in our body. You know, it's a physical change that we have to go through, but that also has something to do with our identity. That's not right. not really taken serious. It's just like, man, just cut your hair off, man. Just get mm -hmm. a razor, just cut your hair off. And um, you know, I've experienced that. My dad goes through that. I've experienced it with my brother, and, I, and again, I used to find myself joking about it. I'm like, that's not a laughable thing. Like my brother, like, I mean, I, I I'm I, I'm putting him on blast <laughs> like on this, but. Um, you know, just as men, like, we go through certain things that's often laughed off. Like, you know, we're talking about losing our virginity. You know, that's that's supposed to be this cool macho thing. But how many yeah. young boys were exposed to, like, sexual acts early on? And, and, and we get started down this cycle of, like, like just trauma. You mm -hmm. know, we never open up and talk about it, you know, versus Facts. if something happened to women. I feel like it's more of a safe space for them to talk to somebody about it. And they're, like, you know, catered to... But for men, it's just like, boy, oh, boy, you lost, you lost it, man. You out there, yeah, you know, getting yeah. it in. It's yeah, just yeah. like, no, man, I'm, I'm, tra I'm tra traumatized, and I don't know yeah. it, you know. And I'm trying to force this thing to be cool. I think that's that's a position as as men, we're forced into. But getting back to being a single man, it's like, it's little things like that, man. Um, where when other people don't take you serious, I've had to learn to take myself serious, you know. Like especially like with the journey of practicing abstinence, you know, my journey hasn't been perfect. Um, like some of my homeboys, I would try and talk to them about it. Like, yeah, man, you know, I'm not sleeping around no more. And they just like, again, start joking about it. Like, boy, yeah. what, man, you that's crazy, man. Right, it's corny, um, huh? I say they see it as corny. Right, mm -hmm. right. I was like, man, that's square. That's lame. And prime mm -hmm. example of like, I don't know if you saw um, the thing with Russell Wilson in the media where um, one of the guys from a podcast tried to call him square. You know, wow. Just because of the way that he moved and carried himself as a yeah. man. But it's yeah. like. I want to be a square man. Like, I want to be a wholesome man, but it, it'll it never be cool, and I'm okay with that. You know, like, being a leader, um, going against the grain, you're always going to be ostracized. But as a single man that's, like, striving to, like, do the right thing, it, it causes us to live and lead a different life, you know, to go yeah. against the norm, to 
you know, not be out at the clubs no more, not be out, you know, chasing women, you know, having control of your testosterone and, and learning how to love yourself, even even when it's laughable and nobody else is going to support you. Like a lot of times as men, we have to face a lot of things alone and not necessarily collectively. And that can be hard. So on my journey, man, I noticed like when I initially gave my life back to God and, um, you know, it was on this trajectory. Like, man, I don't want to get I don't want to smoke weed no more. I ain't trying to drink every weekend no more. I ain't trying to sleep with women no more. All my homeboys, because they were still in that space, they were trying to like pull me back into it. You know, like man, come right. on, just hit it one time. Just, yeah. You know, and, or like man, just get some head. Like you don't got to go that far. Yeah. But I, I learned that I had to like for men like like think about King David. He had he had to go into that cave. You know, and you, you go into that cave and you come out a different man. You just realize that we're we're we were put here individually, and in our most important relationship outside of one another is our relationship with God. You know, and I think that's important on my journey as a single man is learning how to depend on God when there's nobody else for me to talk to or get yeah. advice from. So that that's a little bit of my point of view, man. How about yourself? What's your journey been like, and what's something that that you've learned? Man, it's tough, bro. And, and a great point you made, you know, with your boy saying, "Hey, just a little bit ahead, just a little bit of this, a little bit of that." is that, you know, a slow leak still causes damage. Right. You understand? Right. And a lot of times we try to ignore that, like, okay, if I do it every now and then, it's okay. Right. But nah, yo, a slow leak still causes damage. And that's something I had to kind of like, you know, as I said, in my life is like, okay, I'm not doing this every single day. But it's not okay to even like slip up every now and then. Right. You know, but when you compare yourself, for me for me personally, what I, what I, you know, what I've done is sometimes I compare myself, you know, to the people I know and be like, man, they doing this every day, every night. Um, I, I remember being in college, bro, comparing myself to my teammates, right? Because usually, you know, I'm in my dorm room, I'm, I'm studying, you know, I'm just focused. And um, they out every single night just, you know, just doing what they do. Right. And, I, you know, I'm like, bro, it's almost like you want to feel like you're better than them. And, and you know, because you're not doing it every night, you're doing it every now and then, it's okay. But it's still not okay. When you're trying to live pure, bro, um, you know, you, you have to make that sacrifice and be consistent with it. And for me personally, man, it, it, it hasn't been easy, to be honest. Um you know, because as a man, too, you know, we're natural hunters, right? You know, it's one thing for, you know, for T.D. Jakes to be, you know, celibate, right? But it's another thing for, like, a young man, like, you know, you're, you're an attractive man, like, you know, women coming to you. Man, it's, it's a lot tougher, bro. So, like, for me personally, it's like, you know, I'm not trying to say I'm the most handsome man in the world, but, you know, like, like women do approach me right. at a higher right. rate. Right. right. So, and right. I do have weak moments. So, right. you know, trying to follow my moral code, my fate, you know, I'll be honest. I'll be honest, man. Like, I haven't been perfect. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. and, and I, I've been intentional to where I'm like, I'm not doing it. But there's times where I find myself, you know, slipping up, um, you know, because of that same thing, yo, every now and then won't hurt. Right. You know, but I'm right. realizing that, yo, like, you have to have a heart that's fully surrendered. Right. You know, you can't, da you know, dabble and dip and, you know, into that. So um, it's a work, you know, I'm, I'm a work in progress. I am very intentional. And I feel like one of the things, one of the practical things that work for me is not putting myself in situations or certain yes. environments, right? Yeah. So so women already come at me. But now if I'm going to the club, bro, if I'm, um, you know, just... Setting yourself up. Yeah, I'm setting myself up. Yeah. You know, so I, I, for me personally, man, I, I, I work and I try to stay home, stay indoors. Right. Um, that don't take temptation away. But now I'm kind of limiting it. Right. You understand? I'm not right, I'm, I'm controlling my environment. Um, but yeah, man. And then for me personally, I don't know, but other guys that's doing it, man, your relationship with God, bro. So the closest I am to God, that's the only way I'm able to like manage and like control myself. Because now, yeah. you know, it's my purity is about him, trying yeah. to honor him, trying to, you know, trying to be uh, what he created me to be. Yeah. Um, that's the only thing that works for me. You know, some other guys, I'm not sure where to get their strength from and, you know, their approach to it. But for me, just my relationship with God is what keeps me, keeps me. And even when I slip up, I'm like, I got to get back. And I got to get back. Hey, you made a good point, bro. Like, I think when men, when we're not healthy as men, mm -hmm. we get our strength from our homeboys. Right. We, we, that apply that pat on the back, you know. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I've realized, like, like stepping into understanding who Christ is and as a king, that kings don't run in cliques. You know, like, but we can rule and come together and iron sharpens iron. But in every group that we're in as men, somebody's the leader, you know. Yeah. But but I think just the more that I submit to God and understand that he's my leader, it makes me more comfortable. Now I can go talk to another man and not feel insecure, feel like, 
oh, you know, he's taller than me or he's this or that, whatever insecurities that will want to want to pop up. And I can learn how to be secure around other brothers and not look for validation or right. comparison. And I think that's another thing today that we face, like with social media. As men, we're always judged by men. How tall are you? You know, um, um, you know, how fast are you? How much money do you make? Like all of these numbers. Right. And so like with social media, you see guys who's flex and they see, appear to have money and attention and stuff. Sometimes like. I've had to like catch myself on on like, am I ambitious enough? You know, like yeah, it, it make like man, I'm not making enough money. You know, instead of like it can become a distraction. You know, you said something the other day about um, a, a king is never a king if if he's a slave to his pleasure. Yeah, you, know? you can't can't be a king if you're a slave to your pleasures. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think like just even chasing pleasure um, distracts you from your purpose. And I, and I realize the more that I focus on my purpose, the less that I care about profits, the less that I care about, you know, comparing myself to other men that I see on the internet. Yeah. And now I can confidently go around other brothers and just like, it'd be a safe space. You know, yeah. like I could be a safe space for them. You know, like, man, I ain't judging you, bro. I ain't trying to size you up. You know, like you, you, you see a lot of that just with like when guys click up who are unhealthy and insecure, they sizing each other up that, well, I'm better than him because I got this or that or I'm taller than him or I can bench more weight or whatever the case may be. But just when you allow God to come in and renew your mind, it, it is a lonely journey, you know? It, yeah, it is, man. I'm telling you, bro. And the biggest thing, man, is comparing yourself, bro. Because like we don't really have a benchmark. Um, and sometimes the men we compare ourselves to isn't a good benchmark, right? right? So, right. and when you do that, it's like, bro, you know, yeah, you may be doing good. And, and this this conversation I have with myself, I'm like, okay, I'm doing good. You know, I'm not over here just slinging, you know, I'm doing right. good. Right. I'm focused. Every now and then I'll dabble, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing better than most, right? right? But God's not calling us to do good, to be good. He's calling us to be great. You right. understand? So right. to be great, you got to make great sacrifices. Right. You know, so like right. it may be okay for him to do that, to dabble there every now and then. But for you, he's calling you to be great. So that was a conversation and something that I'm still working on. Yeah. Um, understand that, yo, you can't compare yourself, bro. Like yeah. you're different. Yeah. Right. You're different. So you got to move different. You got to make sacrifices yeah. um, to really become who, you, who you're supposed to be. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think one thing that I realized along that journey of becoming greater is understanding that when I make a mistake... Like to not continue to beat myself up because I become yeah. more self aware. Like you exactly. know what? What can I learn from this? Let me move different and not right. abuse at the same time. Not abuse God's grace and mercy, no. but understand that I need Him. You know that I can't try and do it on my own. You know, like, yeah. there's there's not enough working out at the gym to try and move that testosterone to replace God. Like you still God still has to be the forefront of my life. And, and I just yeah. like you said, man. Just I know. I become more self-aware. Like I know, like okay, I need to get in my word. I ain't been praying or fasting enough. I'm, my flesh is starting to override. I'm starting. I'm lessing yeah. a little too much. I'm, yeah. I'm starting to say some words that I know I don't need to be saying. You know, I'm listening yeah. to certain music. Like I think that's the journey. Just as a man, becoming more self-aware, knowing what works for you and what doesn't. You know, um, but and we again just going back to the to the place of like we don't have room to complain. I think like I've let go of it now, but it, I went through a period. <coughs> it was frustrated, man. Just always like. I felt like as a man, like is being a heterosexual man today yeah. is is tough, man. I feel like there's so much talk about toxic masculinity, toxic this or that, that every anything that I do confidently like that feels true to me, yeah. like, oh man, it's gonna be labeled as toxic, you know? Yeah. But I've, I've like just let go of that. I'm just like, man, I'm just gonna be myself just in every environment that I go in, I'm gonna let people think what they think. Um, and just, you know, cause I used to allow other voices to overpower and control like yeah. what my identity as a, as is as a man. But the more that I get into word, my word and allow God to show me from his point of view, what a healthy man is and looks like, you know, now I can like the voices of comparison as well as the voices of destruction and distraction. I can put them at bay and say, nah, I know who I am. Like yeah. I know where I'm leading from and coming from is, is not toxic, but it's just, it's, it's, it's masculine and it might be yeah. foreign to other people. And what's crazy too, man, like if you actually like try to like, like actually track it, bro, like just your sexual period, you do it for like a week, you do it for a month. You see the difference. It's a clear difference, yo. When you're nice. actually, it's a clear difference, you know. Nice. And I think it's, that's the reason why you know those urges are so strong because, man, like a man that can control his sexual urges is a dangerous man, bro. Right. You understand that? Right. So, no, right. yeah. So for me, man, I understand that, and and I do, you know, you know, I've been trying to put the guidelines in place, you know, because one thing too, man, is like, okay, you're single, maybe you're not sleeping with uh, other women, 
um, but maybe you're pleasuring yourself. Right. Understand? So like you're online looking at you know naked women, pornography right. and stuff. That's still a form of you know. Right. The, I'll say you're cheating. Or right. Take it a step yeah, further, yeah. bro. Sometimes it could be a wet dream. Yeah. You know, sometimes a spirit can be attached to exactly. from the past that we haven't subconsciously removed or prayed about. And that's facts, bro. And that's facts. So like you know, you pleasuring yourself, using you know, you using Pamela to pleasure yourself. That's <laughs> still you know that that's still. It still affects your sexual purity, right? right? And, and because you're, you know, you're, you're watching an image or a video, and those soul ties, you understand? Like it's energy, bro. Those soul ties, they'll come through the phone as well. It's not right. just that per, that, that person to person interaction. It's actually you watching those videos, you, you know, feeding certain things to your mind. It does affect you on the soul level as well. So, you know, being a single man, man, trying to do the right thing, you have to protect your eyes from all of that, bro. Like yeah. when it comes to social media. You know, there's naked women everywhere on social media, you know. Um, and that's how it starts. Like, for me personally, bro, it always starts with, like, yo, you go on Instagram, you see a picture, right? right? Now you're like, right. dang, I want to see a video, right? right? right. Now you see a video, like, bro, I'm about to go out tonight, and I'm, I'm about to try to find somebody. Right. You see the right. buildup, and that's right. how the enemy works. Remember, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? So yeah. Yeah. if he can't kill you right away, he going to steal your attention a little bit, right? He going to steal a little time, right? Yeah. And that's how he, he builds it up until he can destroy you. Bro, and yeah. that's how it works. The enemy, because as men, we're visual creatures, right? Facts. So what happens is just just like Jesus was, was tempted in the wilderness, yeah. he was tempted visually. Listen, I can give you all of this. Right, you know? right, right. And that's why we got to be so connected to God so that we remember what the blueprint that he gave us, what mm -hmm. that he told us to do. Just like Adam in the garden, God had already given him a blueprint, but he got distracted by listening to another voice. You know, And that's right. the thing why as men... We have to understand that we're called to be leaders and that, that we take take rule and submission from our relationship with God. And that's how we activate right. that where, where we can get to that point of like, okay, I can be disciplined enough to say, man, I'm not going to masturbate anymore. I'm not going to be out here sleeping mm -hmm. around and chasing women. And it is a difficult task, especially after you've experienced it. It is, bro. It, it is. It's a fight. Yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's not easy, man. It's not easy at all. But what you have to understand as well is that you know how you handle your singleness is how how you're going to handle your relationship right yes. so if i yes. if i'm if i'm if i make masturbation a habit when i'm single i'm going to masturbate in my relationship bro yes. right you know i'm in marriages and because you know one of the couples that just can't get over masturbation or pornography right so yeah. During your single time, you know, we, we don't really understand how important being, you know, when you're single, how important it is to be disciplined. Yeah. Um, but it's laying the foundation for a relationship, yeah. right? So whatever you can't, whatever struggles you have during your singleness, you're going to have those during your relationship if you don't take the time to actually conquer those. Facts, man. Yeah. Facts. And that, I think just in my journey, that's, I'm being self-aware. Like, you know, I know I'm not perfect. I, I, I noticed that. Um, I'm more self-aware with the mistakes that I make and like, okay, what, what, what did I do? What were the boundaries that I didn't have set in place? And that yeah. helps me, you know, set better boundaries and guidelines for myself, you know, and that's why I move so different as a man. Like, yeah. that's why I can't just be on the scene and just hang with any and everybody because my moral code is different, you know? Right. Like, oftentimes I hear people talk about Proverbs 31, but they don't look at before the Proverbs 31 woman looking at like what King, what king Lemuel's mother wrote to him, you know, talking about, you know, remember that you're a king. You remember that yeah. you have people you, um, that are looking up to you, that you can't be out acting like everybody else, getting drunk and being like the rest of the world, being like right. the crowd. You know, you're different. Right. And I have to remind myself of that. And sometimes people take it as like, man, you're cocky. I'm like, no, I know the God that I serve and the mission that I was put here to do. Yeah. And I can't, I can't blend and be like you and just go along to get right. along. You know? Right, right, and it, it all comes down to man, like women, women are praised for their sexual purity, but men were looked down on for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. It, it comes down to making that a cool thing. We gotta have more conversations like this to make it. Yeah. You know, like if you're a 20 year old virgin, a 25 year old virgin, like yo, bro, that's a great thing. Like celebrate that. You understand? Right. But right. we don't make we make it seem like yo, man, you lame. You know, right. when actually, man... Man, it's tough, it, though, because I can't <laughs> sit here and flex and say I would wear, like, a Purity Rocks t-shirt either, you know? Nah, like, nah, 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 but, <laughs> but nah, but to be honest, though, like, if you if you can, though, like, if you can go back, would you... Oh. But I'd be happy, bro, to be 28 and virgin, bro. Man. I'd be... No kidding, bro. Yeah. I would feel like Superman. I'd be walking around here so proud. I'm like, man, yeah. you know? But, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Um, yeah. But we got we got to stop moving like kings and, like, stop, you know, stop really... Um, um, I'd say start really appreciating our sexual purity and yeah. like really making it, you know, something that that's cool and something that that's not really frowned upon when it comes yeah. to the guy code. You yeah. Know, and the, just having these conversations, man, like 
I'm thankful that you and I have been able to meet, man, because it, it is comforting. It is encouraging to hear another yeah. brother's journey. Like, man, like it's hard. I, it's hard out here. Yeah. And not trying to play this macho bravado. Like, man, yeah, I'm getting them all. It's I'm not easy. That. Like, and it never will be. I, it ain't that, easy. We always gonna face that temptation, um, you know. But just moments like this, understand that two kings can come together and we can rule together. We get iron sharpens iron. You know, right. we need. Um, that accountability we need to be able to talk to brothers you know and be Facts. able to say man this is what i'm going through mm -hmm. you know to be able to like be vulnerable you know Facts. and and it not then it not be where we clown on each other for certain things man like, i think that's one thing as as men that we got to like learn to like let go of cuz we've been programmed to like laugh off yeah. trauma and to laugh yeah. off our emotional pain and turmoil that Facts. Um, creates quote unquote toxic masculinity yeah. you know but let me ask you something bro like yeah you know Personally, like, what what are some of the things that you do? Like, when those urges do flare up, like, what are some of the steps you take? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're super horny. Yeah. You know, and it's one of those nights. Like, what a, I hope you're not getting too, you know, too technical. But, like, yeah. what are some of the practical things that you do to make sure that you're protecting yourself and your purity? Man, so I take out my purity box, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. Hey, I, I know my body, man. I have the moments, bro, where I'm like, dog, I got to go to the gym and lift the heaviest thing possible. Like, honestly, that, that that's my therapy. You know, okay, get, the going in the steam room and the um, and the sauna, yeah. like, 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 release is a release for me. Okay. You know, like, and working out, like, I have to go exhaust myself for yeah. writing. Like, journal, I journal every day, bro. Like, wow. You know, I haven't that's, done that's, it, of course, like, being here, but journal. Yeah. Journaling is my thing, bro. That's like, big, bro. It's, that's big. It's a life force, right? Now, yeah. life force needs to go somewhere, it needs right? To go, right? That's what we don't understand. We think that, like, that this means I need to procreate. It's like, yeah. yo, like, like God is trying to trying to speak to you, and you need to produce through your purpose. Yeah. So writing and just going to the gym, perfecting my body, yeah. um, um, help sometimes going for a run, reading, um, getting my mind into a different place, and sometimes just praying, or also, bro, something that I recently implemented to my life is fasting. So this like two months ago, I did a, a three day fast, no food, no water. Now I'm not recommending y'all just jump out there and do this, but I've done two. Um, I started out, did the um, one month, I did the no food, no water for three days. Hardest thing I've ever done, but the most clarity mm -hmm. I've ever had. Just like to subdue everything in yeah. my body. And then I did another one like uh, a month after that, uh, two days, just um, just water only. Just for that clarity nice. and that focus. Because sometimes, like you said, bro, like there's only so many times we can get on social media and see a half naked woman or like yeah. go out. Yeah. Yeah. Before it starts to really eat away at us, so we kind of right. gotta like cleanse ourselves. So Facts. exercising, fasting, reading, um, journaling. Sometimes like it's rare, but like I'll talk to like a homeboy, and I'm like, bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I mean, I need to hit something quick, you know. Like mm -hmm. I just get just express it, just like, yeah. bro, like, man, I'm I'm weak right now, like, yeah, bro, yeah. like I really need, you know. Um, so just sometimes just saying that. Yeah. Uh, but then, like, not not acting on it by diverting that energy into something else because that's a life force. So, that's powerful, what about yourself, man? man? What what works for you? That's powerful, man. For me personally, man, gym, obviously yeah, the gym. I, yeah, I yeah, see, so, I see. So I stay in the gym, bro. I work out, bro. I work out. That helps a lot. Reading, bro. I read. I, I read and um, fasting as well. So like, I try to fast weekly. So every Wednesday. I try to shut down, like, I'll do nothing, like, fast for 24 hours. I try to make it a weekly thing where I fast weekly. Yeah. Um, and then also, like, you know, waking up in the morning. So my routine is, you know, waking up at 4.30, getting my spiritual time and yeah. meditation and all that. Yeah. That helps me a lot. And when I'm not, in, you know, I'm not praying and meditating, I feel it throughout the day, you know what I'm saying? So for me personally, man, just, just being intentional with my spiritual time, that's what helps me because, you know, now I'm starting the day with the right mindset, the right perspective. Um, but, yeah, the gym, bro, reading, um, those are the two I yeah. use a lot, to bro. be honest. Mm -hmm. And you hit something on the head. I think something that's very important for men, too, is having a disciplined morning routine. Yeah. Bro, when I'm on that 430 grind, like waking up, it sucks. It's a sacrifice. Yeah. But, man, when I'm waking up and saying, man, I know I got an hour to give, you know, get my spirit and my mind right and then go work out. Mm -hmm. Bro, my days, like, I become like Superman, bro. It's yeah. just like the flow, just even just like the opportunities that come my way, just the clarity, the focus, like, man, I think it's important yeah. for everybody, but it's specifically men mm -hmm. to have a disciplined morning routine to write out what it is that you need to do the night before, you know? And I noticed like in just in this season of just like more focus, more intentionality and doing those things, man, yeah. bro, my, just my life is better, you know? Like I just more clear. Yeah, because you're more intentional. Yeah. It's, you're just not living to live, that you're being very intentional. You're not just going with the wind. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a valuable uh, practice. Yeah, and just lastly, I just want to say, man, just like I think that 
it's a spiritual warfare that we're facing, man. It's not to blame women. It's not to blame society. It's to blame just the adversary, just the way, um, you know, good versus evil works. But, man, that the devil wants to distract men with pleasure. He wants us to not focus on our position as being spiritual leaders because then we're not leading women, you know. Perfect. And then now it, the more women are, are in church and, and listening and paying attention to God than we are. And we're focused on all these other things. So we're breaking down the family unit by being distracted, you know. Great point. Um, and so, you know, just thinking about, about Adam being in the garden. It was, he, it was, he was in communion with God before Eve ever came into the picture. And so I think that's most important for us as men in our single season, you know, to, to develop that moral code and to develop that personal relationship with the creator. Because I grew up in the church. My dad's a pastor, yeah. but I didn't find God for myself till 23, till, till when just life hit me in the face and like just I could no longer depend on mommy and daddy's prayers. Yeah. I got on my knees and I found God for myself, man, and that changed my life. And I haven't, you know, I haven't been perfect on my journey, but man, my life is 10 x since then, bro. Yeah, absolutely, bro. And um, that's a great point you made too, bro. Is is during your single time, you have to be able to lead yourself. If you can't lead yourself, you'll never be able to lead a woman and lead a family. So. Right. That's why singleness is very important because you'll be able to tell, okay, now I'm ready because I, I can lead myself. I'm disciplined enough to lead a, a woman and then lead a family. So, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. It's, it's vital, man. You know, um, <coughs> that's why, like, sometimes I'm so hardcore in my beliefs, man, because I'm, I know my clarity. Yeah. I know when something has come from God and I know when something is not from God. Yeah. So, so just sometimes I'll have conversation with people and I'll hold to, like, what is true to me yeah. because the devil's always going to try and attack you, like, and a man that, that won't stand for, for something will fall, fall for, for anything, anything man. Right. And so, like, man, when we learn to, like, stand in what God... Man, imagine being a Noah or a Moses and God gives you something that's clear as day. Yeah. And everybody else is around trying to distract you and tell you, right. man, you a fool, man. Like, it ain't yeah. gonna rain. We ain't had this yeah. or that. You know what I'm saying? And, like, that's... We face that. Like, that's our social media today. Like, God has given us all purpose, those of us who are focusing on him. But we got to battle that that foolish talk from other people trying to say, man, you're crazy. That's why every day it is vital that I, that I connect with God. I pray and say, God, I need you. God, strengthen me. Yeah. Show me what to do because it's always going to be some form of attack. Every day we battling, bro. Every, every day. single day, bro. Every single, every single second day. It's a sp spiritual warfare. And the Bible talks about spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, but we're so carnal bro like we're so carnal we think that the physical is, is all that's happening but really right. bro every single thing bro, from social media just everything's happening in the world but it's spiritual warfare yes. right it's yes. happening right before us you know those who are aware understand it but most 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 times we don't you know yeah. we're just living um but to really tap into our purpose and to take, to take the next step we have to understand that this is spiritual warfare and i have to be very intentional on how i'm moving who i'm meeting you know every single thing yeah. Yeah. And, and, and one another thing that I've noticed too, bro, is the more that I'm connected to God as a man, the more that I repel a certain type of woman, a certain type of spirit. Like the yeah. more clear I am, I can sense a Jezebel spirit walking up. Yeah. You know, versus yeah. when I was young and dumb, just out there in the streets. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. Just, I was falling left and right to everything yeah. that was coming my way. Yeah. But the more clear I become, man, just more connected to God. Yeah. The more the higher caliber spiritual women I feel like I attract into my life. Yeah. You know, because the Holy Spirit is real, bro. Like you know, like. When Jesus talked about leaving you a comforter, bro, like when you're connected, you feel guided. You know what I'm saying? That that little still voice that yeah. say, "Hey, Caleb, don't do this. Hey, go yeah. this way, go that way." That's the Holy Spirit, bro. It's real. Boy, it's real. we gotta start a podcast. Hey, no, they, have to, God man. might be saying something right here, man. <laughs> might be our new purpose. Yeah, no, man. man but, that's 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 my two cents on it, man. Too, yeah, you know, just being a single man striving to do the right thing, man. So yeah, yeah. Hey, practical steps, man. You know. It's the urges won't go away. It's natural to feel those urges, man. But just like God gave you those urges, He also gave you the power to control those urges as well. So whatever it takes, man, meditating, working out, whatever it takes, you know, to stay pure. And fellas, man, remember that, you know, you can't be a king if you're a slave to your pleasures. I'll say it again. You cannot be a king if you're a slave to your pleasures, right? Because the adversary is going to find a way to get those pleasures to take you down. Peace. Yeah, I got one last thing to share. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Keep going, my boy. Keep and, and, going. and lastly, I just want to remind the fellas also that um, we'll never be perfect, but perfection is always the goal. The Bible commands us to, to be perfect as your father in heaven. That is our example. That is our that is our guide of the men and the men that we should we should strive to be. So I just want to finish with that. <laughs> All right, man. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, man. Yes, appreciate y'all, man. They yes, keep sir. striving to be the best you can be. 
last night that was a key that's point that stuck with you, right? Yo, you can't be a king if you're a slave to your pleasures. That shit, that shit hit home. A1 right there. Hell yeah.